Have you ever wondered how we went from squishy rubber balls to durable tires? It's thanks to an accidental spill and one man's relentless quest to make a difference. In the early 1800s, natural rubber extracted from the heavier Brassian Seuss tree was a miracle material. It could stretch and bend without breaking, and waterproof everything from life preservers to shoes to men. But it had a major flaw. It melted into sticky blobs in summer heat and turned brittle in winter cold, making it commercially unreliable. By the 1830s, rubber factories were on the verge of collapse. Products like life preservers, shoes and mailbags were literally decomposing in warehouses, accumulating there as foul-smelling, useless ma- But one man refused to give up on stabilizing the material. After his family's hardware business failed in 1830, Charles Goodyear became obsessed with solving rubber's problems. He experimented with toxic chemicals like nitric acid, lime and turpentine in makeshift labs, mixing them in his family's teacups and saucers and working from as little as a thimbleful of materials. And though he faced ridicule, eviction, and even debtors' prison, he persevered. In 1836, Goodyear developed a nitric acid treatment that reduced the stickiness of rubber, but it failed when exposed to heat. Undeterred, he partnered with Nathaniel Hayward, whose process used sulfur to minimize adhesiveness. Goodyear bought out Hayward, but still sought a complete solution. Then in 1839, everything changed. While working at the Eagle India Rubber Company in Woburn, Goodyear accidentally dropped a mixture of rubber and sulfur onto a hot stove. Instead of melting, the rubber charred and hardened into a flexible, heat-resistant material. It was so durable that Goodyear could drive a nail into it without the metal penetrating. He'd discovered Vulcan. It took him five more years to perfect the formula, but he named the process after Vulcan, the Roman god of fire, because heat was the key. Meanwhile, Thomas Hancock independently patented a similar process in England, just weeks earlier, sparking an international dispute. When Goodyear died in 1860, it transformed healthcare by providing st gloves, tubing, and syringes, and it became part of daily life with waterproof clothing, shoe soles, sports equipment, and conveyor belts. Today, vulcanization goes beyond sulfur. Peroxides and metal oxides are used for neoprene, and for medical devices and electronics, room temperature, vulcanizing, or RTV silicones are employed. Though synthetic rubbers like styrene, butadiene rubber, SBR were developed during World War II as an alternative to natural rubber, vulcanization remains essential for enhancing the properties of these synthetic variants. From the Mesoamerican rubber bowls of 1500 BCE to the 200 million tires produced annually, vulcanization underpins $300 billion in global rubber products. Goodyear's own words captured his struggle. Like, comments, and subscribe.